morning to everybody. Say adons, best wishes for you people who are about to face the examination shortly. See, we wish you to approach the examination with positive attitude and positive thoughts. So you can able to win the race. Uh, sincere best wishes and prayers for your success in the examination and do in the life. So today's topic for you is EM Rapid. That one, we are going to discuss about RSI in pediatric age group. There are two things you have to know. One is the term RSI. We all know about RSI. I don't need to explain what is meant by RSI, what are the things we are going across to discuss in RSI. But this terminology now has been changed to RSII. That is rapid sequence intubation has become rapid sequence induction and intubation. So in the adult and pediatric, there is anatomical, physiological and pathophysiological differences, including the differences in the clinical presentations. That everyone has to be very well versed with. So in the course of this one, I will be explaining certain anatomical changes in the pediatric age group, which in what way you will be hindering your process of the intubation and induction. Next, going to this one. So you all know the seven P's. So there is a preparation. The preparation includes the preparation of equipment, preparation of the medication, and preparation of the patient himself or herself. Okay. So before touching the patient or going nearer the patient, everyone nowadays are conscious about the personal protective equipment. The most important thing to safeguard yourself. Your safety is the most important one as a healthcare personnel. Then regarding the preparation of the equipment, what you are need to be for with respect to the pediatric age group. So in the pediatric age group, again, there are different stages. That is newborn, unit, and then infants, okay, toddlers like that. So accordingly, the anatomical features change. And the size of the equipment you are going to use in each period or these in milestones also will be changed. So you have to select an appropriate size instruments including the carcass in summer exam, endotracheal tube, or the ambuba, everything. And not only the selection to the correct size, and the functionality of each and every equipment should also be kept in mind. So you have to check it freehand whether it is functioning properly or not. Next one is the equipments are divided into two groups. Sorry. One is the airway clearance and then airway maintenance. And second group is the equipment needed for the oxygenation. So the airway clearance, all of you know, the most important essential thing is suction apparatus and its accessories. Here in the pediatric in, uh, age group, most important thing, you should have a Y connection or thumb control connector. Why do you want to have it? Because with this, you can control the pressure, negative pressure you are applying to during the suction and also the duration you are applying the suction. Both these things count. For example, neonates, very small children, it is only for 5 seconds you have to apply the suction. Okay. So, this is the most important connector. Don't forget. Number 2 is the longer suction. So, this is a bigger size, rigid catheter with an angulation with a wide bore. Especially when the secretions of, of the blood, which are all thick, and then clots inside the oropharynx, this regular catheter, smaller catheters cannot be applicable. So, on the food materials, vomitous material, so this can all be sucked out with the longer suction. And another one is the regular suction catheters, when you are using through an endotracheal tube, the diameter of the catheter should not exceed more than half of the diameter, internal diameter of the endotracheal. So these are the things we have to keep in mind. And then opening of the airway, as usual with the airway manuals, don't give hyperextension or don't allow the child to go in the flexion. This will be obstructing the airway. And usage of the airway adjuncts like oral or mesopharyngeal airways. So you should know the indications, contraindications, and method of application and the complications. 
then the oxygenation that includes the pre oxygenation and ventilation so for this it starts from the nasal cannula and then the mask nor bm and then bag mask valve device nav all these things so everything will be giving different count percentage of concentration of oxygen when you want to have the 100% better go for the bmb or around 90% nrb then comes the laryngoscope so they are available both in the straight as well as the curved blade in different sizes sizes starting from 00 or 0 so very small children according to the size the size selection depends upon to the patient's group which in which this neonates depend how to select an appropriate size see you keep the tip of the laryngoscope blade at the core angle of the mandible the handle end handle junction should correspond to the upper lip or incisa okay in the middle of it this will be a correct size and then regarding the use of the miller the miller is used in the very small children Okay, the straight blade is used in the older children. So the advantage of the Miller blade is it's a thin blade, so size small uh, uh, patients will be having a larger tongue. So in order to push the tongue to one side for a visualization as well as an intubation purpose, this straight blade will help. Another purpose of the straight blade is the epiglottis in this age group will be long. and it may be obscuring the view of the glottic opening so you pass the straight blade under the epiglottis and lift the epiglottis as such so that you can able to have a clear visualization of the glottic opening and one important accessory in your armamentarium should be a video laryngoscope in cases difficult airway you should anticipate it you can go straight from the usage of the video laryngoscope then comes with the endotracheal tube the smaller sizes tubes are available the tubes are available in two versions cuffed tubes and uncuffed tubes the cuffed tubes are available from 3.5 onwards the tubes are available in the increment of 0.5 mm internal diameter and 2 2.5 and 3 are uncuffed tube from 3.5 onwards cuff tube the main advantage of the cuff tube is it will prevent the aspiration number 2 it will be preventing the leakage of gases air or oxygen when you are giving positive pressure ventilation so and another thing is we can give higher positive pressure ventilation in certain conditions when it is needed next is the exact tube size selection so here you can see the table for the Less than one year of age, it starts from the 2.5 to even it may go up to 3.5 or so. In the age group above four years, sorry one year, the calculation is age in years divided by four, and they add four that will give the uncuffed tube size. And age in years divided by four plus 3.5 give 3.5 will give the cuffed tube size. Even though you are selecting an appropriate size of four or four point five, always keep one or two smaller size tubes also. The calculation will be different. Our visualization not tempting. That particular size may not be negotiable. And other accessories like endotracheal tube fixation after the intubation, and position the child's head so, so that the sideways movements or flexion actions. and then during the process of the laryngoscopy we need to position the chest so the rolls should be ready and additional intubation aids like stillet buji and light wand also you have to keep in good working condition to combat for the difficult patients so the difficult airway equipments are apart from the routine laryngoscope and the endotracheal tube we should have a supra or extra glottic airway devices various versions are available so the, the, this difficult airway is different cannot intubate cannot ventilate is another scenario presented a different scenario. so 
so there we have to use for emergency subclotic rescue airway devices to either for the cricothyrotomy either needle or surgical cricothyrotomy or for tracheostomy see the needle cricothyrotomy less than 10 years of age only needle cricothyrotomy because the cricothyroid cartilage cricoid cartilage and cricothyroid membrane is too small so don't try for the surgical cricothyrotomy so less than 10 years of age remember only needle cricothyrotomy so you have Above that age, either one can be opted for. So, rarely there may be a need for an emergent tracheostomy. The monitors, these are all the routine monitors, pulse oximeter, BP monitor, ECG monitor. See, all should be continuous monitoring. The most important one is don't compromise with the ETCO2 monitor. So, a waveform capnography will be more ideal. In addition, in the pediatric age group, there should be a constant check up of the cuff pressure so there is a manometer ET tube cuff pressure monitor is also in this case the emergency is defibrillated is another important and then regarding the medications preparation so the medications are for your remembrance can be grouped into three groups those medications which are used for induction intubation and the RSA and then those drugs which are used for resuscitation purpose and third group is the drugs which are used for my other medical emergencies for example bronchoconstriction or anaphylaxis all these medications the medications you always check for the availability and expiry date and you should have an idea or know each ml contains how many microgram or milligram or units and what is this ampule or while totally contain the quantity. So these are all more important things. And then medications, how they are selecting is for the RSA, this should have a quickest answer. That is within a minute. For example, cicetamine or propofol. So the atomidate within a minute. In seconds, the patient will become unconscious. The muscle action, suction condom, immediately the effect will be there. Ocronin within 60 seconds, the onset will be there. Quickest onset. And the duration is also shortest so that in case we are not able to succeed in your attempt then we have to revert back to the spontaneous respiration the shortest duration and then recovery recovery should be fast or there should be an antidote to bring back the original normal effect so so the um, other things we will be discussing when the course of this lecture displayed and these drugs should not cause any hemodynamic or respiratory functional complications. In pediatric age group, we will be using smaller dosages. So better you always dilute it well and prepare in advance. And the dosages is depending upon the individual. It should be individual titration. The one is drug administration speed should be very slow. And in boluses, small, small doses, you give it and wait for the duration of onset of the action. And so once the onset is not then again repeat it. So that way we can minimize the total dosage given to the patient and minimize the complications are easy to combat. Okay, this should be done. Okay. Then regarding the paralytic agent, the succinyl choline, so this has got a lot of contraindications as well as side effects. We all know. So for example, contraindication is hyperkalemia, produced by so many conditions. And then uh, adverse effects are hyperkalemia sometimes may cause cardiac arrest. Or the patient may go for mesheter spasm, where we can't open the mouth. And malignant hyperthermia or radicadia. So now the presently, brocuronium has superseded and overtaken the usage of succinyl or succinyl choline chloride. So the rocuronium, another advantage is we are having a ready reversal agent, sugamatex. See, if we want to revert the muscle relaxation effect immediately, we can get it with this agent. Sugamatex. Okay. See, in addition, you should have in your drug armamentarium other reversal agents. For example, flumazenil for benzodiazepines, naloxone for opioids, uh, everything. Okay, this should also be available. When necessary, you should have to be and comes the preparation of the patient himself. So the preparation starts with the 
as soon as you are receiving the patient you can start the preparation and as soon as you are deciding to go for an endotracheal intubation you can immediately start patient preparation most important step is the pre oxygenation see the patient is having a spontaneous breathing we can use an nrbm and then you can in addition the nrbm will give only 90% of the fio2 percentage so the additional 10% can be achieved by the nasal cannula with a flow rate less than 1 year means 5 liters per minute larger children we can give 10 to 15 liters per minute this additional this one will be taken care of the 10% total we will be getting 100% so the nasal cannula and other advantages is it will facilitate the apneic oxygenation and it will reduce the rate and speed of desaturation during the apneic period during the process of intubation and the patient you have to completely examine the patient and you have to know the comorbidities medications okay all the other system the difficult airway assessment also you should not forget and in case there is a foreign body obstruction so better we keep an otolaryngologist and in a planned setup or we can keep the child for an intubation in such cases, the megal scorpions, the smaller size, if a foreign body is visualized with the laryngoscopy, you can pick it up and remove it. And then IV or IV access should be reliable and readily available. So, I already talked about the medications we prepare in advance, label and keep them ready. Okay. And then certain patients may need fluid volumes before induction agent or the sedative drugs or analgesics are given further was in the hypotension so 20 ml per kilogram of the normal saline so this will compare or prevent the hypotension occurring during the induction intubation or post -induction. if it is not responding to this one then we have to go for the post dose vasopressin this is the latest concept for example epinephrine 0.1 ml per kilogram or 1 microgram per kilogram administered as bolus dosages till they advance the target systolic blood pressure of more than 70 plus age into 2. So the indications are pre RSA administration only significant hypotension or poor cardiac function. The another entity is a delayed sequence intubation. There is a group of patients who are going for hypoxia but they are agitating, non-cooperating. So pre-oxygenation or oxygen administration by any means now may not be possible. In such cases, the delayed sequence induction can be done. There is usage of a smaller dosage of ketamine. For example, normal dosage is 1 to 2 milligram per kilogram for anesthetic purpose. This is an analgesia dose of 0 0.25 milligram. That is 1 fourth to 1 third of the anesthetic dosage. We are giving so the patient will be quietened and if he is breathing spontaneous, you can administer oxygen. In an appropriate manner, if the patient is not spontaneous withdrawal, spontaneous respiration is not adequate, then you can supplement with a bag mask ventilation also. Whenever necessary, delayed sequence intubation should be done. And then the laryngoscopy and tracheal intubation. Should be, again the positioning comes most important. One in infants, a role should be kept under the torso of the body. Okay, so that is the shoulders. So the infants, the head is big. And occiput is also bigger. So if you are putting supine, then the head will be flexing. So it will be causing the airway obstruction. And the older children, the folded sheet or the roll should be under the head. I will show you the pictures. So the above one is for the infants. You see the under the shoulder we are keeping the folded cover. Don't keep big pillows. I so that itself will be causing more problem. And the older children you can see. Okay, the next should be little extended also. And then epiglottis, as I, we were discussing, it is a long. And then maybe if it's obscuring the vision, so we can use a tight bed in smaller children and lift it, we can solve the problem. So another maneuver to improve the laryngeal view is external laryngeal manipulation. So the operator himself has to use one finger, left hand will be operating and trying to signalize. We can keep the finger over the larynx and then we can move slightly depressed sideways. In one position, we will be having a clear vision. 
So in that position, ask the assistant to keep the same position maintained till the endotracheal intubation is then complete. Okay, so this should be done. Okay. And then cricoid pressure. The recent concept is that cricoid pressure is a double-edged weapon. So to identify the landmark itself and expertise is needed. And uh, as such, the cricoid pressure though prevents the vomiting and respiration. So it hinders the visualization of the laryngoscopy and intubation and bag mask ventilation. Okay, because the trachea is pliable in this area. Suppose you are giving a record pressure, you are landing up in difficulty to visualize or intubate or bag mask ventilated immediately, release the record pressure. And then sometimes you may be putting the endotracheal tube too far inside the trachea. So it may be going to one of the, especially in the right main bronchus or it may be just at the carinal level. So whenever the child is flexing of the neck, it may be going that time into the right main. This should be avoided. The rough calculation can be achieved by the whatever the ID internal diameter tube, for example, four size tube you are using, then you can multiply it by three. So the total say 12 centimeters. This will be the place where the 12 centimeters will be at the lips. There are length based formulas are also. Epicycle intubation has got a good success rates. The post intubation management, the intubation itself within a correct placement should be confirmed with the most appropriate measure is the ideal one is waveform capnography. Remember in small children, pediatric age group, auscultation is highly unreliable. Actually the child you are auscultating on one side, one side only air entry will be there. And the opposite side, no air entry, but in the auscultation, you will hear the air entry. Breath sounds. Why it happens? This is a transmission of the breath sounds, but on the normal side, should be a normal side. So, be clear. Okay. And then, securing the tube in its position. The more appropriate terminology is not securing, it is an anchoring the tube. So, this uh, tube is going to so the purpose of maintaining and protecting the airway for prolonged period even. So it should be in its appropriate place. So the position checking as soon as it is done should be done with an extra chest. So this will be confirming the depth of the tube placement as well as whether it is in the trachea. The depth of the tube placement should be confirmed at the chest. And after that, in smaller age group, the head and neck should be kept in neutral position and it should be immobilized. So you have to prevent the sideways movement or hyperextension or flexion. So this all will be causing a displacement of the endotracheal. And ventilator management, the preferred mode is pressure limited ventilation. And the tidal volume, there are two strategies. Normal tidal volume is 68 ml per kilogram. When you are going for the lung protective strategy, 4 to 6 ml per kilogram. And the respiratory rate changes from the age group of the child and the size of the child. So in infants, remember the normal respiratory rate is 30. So we have to keep around 30 and more. So you should have a normal vital parameters in, in, in your momentarium. There should be references for this. And the IE ratio is usually kept to 1 is to 2 whenever there is necessary for a longer period of expiratory period, we can adjust this. 1 is to 3. And frequent re evaluation is mandatory. The 1 is tube position, number 2 tube is patterned or not, and then connections are tight. Is there any disconnection or any kinking? All these things will be re evaluated. And continuous monitoring. Vital signs, CTCO2, and, uh, and periodic intravenous blood gases should be there. And coming to the repetition of the drugs, sedative, analgesic, and paralytic agents should be adequately repeated before the effect of the previous dosage is worn out. Sometimes we may need to give as an infusion also. And in say, cases like difficult airway, so I already told difficult airway is different from, sorry, different from. Cannot intubate, cannot ventilate scenario. 
So the difficult airway should be well in advance assessed and anticipated. So this will avoid the patient going for cannot intubate, cannot ventilate situations. We may be knowing the causes for the difficult airway, such from the upper airway infection, acute airway obstruction, congenital anatomical airway abnormalities like Perry Robin syndrome or micro or retronathia or any contamination with excessive body fluids. So in such cases, you should have a plan and an advance. And one more thing is always keep the child comfortable and quiet, averting the agitation and crying. The crying child will cause the dynamic airway obstruction because the respiratory passage which are not pliable, so it will be in a, a, a lengthened. So the lengthened will cause the diameter will be narrow, so it will be going for the dynamic airway obstruction. So the difficult airway action management is medical management, use of BMB or NAV. BMB is well tolerated and gives good results. And in case sometimes we have to go for the supraglottic airway device and video laryngoscopy. Necessary we have to go for the ortholaryngosis. Consultant and then as a last result, cricothyroidotomy or emergent cricostomy should be. So difficult airway management. So the intubation attempt failed and also the bag mask ventilation is an inadequate. The next option is supraglottic or extraglottic airway device. It's available in different sizes, brands, everything. Some coming with the intubation facility, some coming with the suctioning port, some coming with the provision for a fiber optic bronchoscope and endoscope. Where you think as the appropriate size collection should be. Okay. See, the most important thing you should not forget is the disadvantages of the supraglottic airway devices. It's only temporary measure. They won't prevent the aspiration or protect the airway. So, the higher ventilatory pressure is needed, it will not be useful. Okay. This will cause the distance of the stomach also. Okay. LMA and IGEL are the most commonly used. Some intubation versions are also available through which the tubes can be passed. Combi tube is not recommended. King LT tubes, they're not much studies. The one important practical point you have to rem remember in uh, the application of the supraglottic airway device, for example, LMA or IGEL. Because of the long epiglottis, when you are passing the LMA or the IGEL, so this epiglottis itself will be pulled backwards and close or occlude the glottic opening. The child will go for hypoxia. So either you should be able to immediately recognize and diagnose it. The remedy is immediately remove the supraglottic airway device and position the chain and reapply slowly, gently in an appropriate manner or seek the help of a So when you are trying to go for an intubation through an intubating supraglottic airway device, we have to select a little smaller size tube. So it will be increasing the airway resistance. So the, end, the endoscopy, which can also be passed, which can guide in the intubation process, but the only thing is smaller endoscope, so the, the availability also is constrained. So the video laryngoscope is an option, you can start with uh, using it from the beginning itself. Then the flexible endoscopic assisted intubation needs a awake cooperative patient, which is not possible in children. And then availability of smaller sizes and then smaller size endotracheal tubes only will be negotiated. The tubes above 5.5 mm only can be used along with this. Okay. So the practical difficulties we have to remember. And cannot intubate, cannot ventilate scenario. So the option is subglottic rescue airway devices, trichothyrotomy which is two types, one is needle cricothyrotomy, already I thought, less than 10 years, only needle cricothyrotomy, no surgical cricothyrotomy. Okay, so there was a size selection, see, smaller infants than 18 years cannula, small children 16 years cannula, and older child 14 years. So these are all the equipments necessary, 10 ml syringe, catheter, over the needle, 
and then 3 mm endotracheal tube connector this will switch to the catheter up by as well as the bag mask device or ventilators this is the way we are putting in the catheter needle correct at the rest and then we are connecting to the bag mask wall device and then transtracheal intubation which can be achieved by two methods one is bag mask valve method or jet ventilation jet ventilation is contraindicated less than 5 years of age parotomy is one of the method to follow and certainly rarely the patient may need to go for an emergent tracheostomy it should be performed only by an expert auto laryngologist so now a few lines about the neonatal airway catheter so similar to infants there is no need to be alarm or only thing that endotracheal tube will be of length longer length so you can cut freehand before intubation itself at the 13 cm mark this will reduce the dead space it will also prevent the change so still it may use really not necessary you may also if it is available can use it so